Hello, my name is Peter Marvel and this is a video about the visual effects of Afterlife, a student film I wrote and directed. This film was created by third year University of Windsor students for a cinematography course. I first want to clarify, by visual effects I don't mean cool CGI effects you see in big blockbusters. That's definitely not the case here, but more so the removal of unwanted background elements of some shots, or cleaning up things in shots noticed only after and post. It would have been nice to be able to reshoot, but that just wasn't an option. So what I'm going to do is show you clips from the film we submitted for class. Obviously we had a tight deadline and needed to submit a final version of the film. But then afterwards I had the luxury of time to go in and refine things, including video audio and audio effects, and create a final version of the film for submission into film festivals. Then I will show clips from that film so you can see the before and after. So I'm going to start off by showing the first shot of the film, which was shot on the second day using a Panasonic GH5. Um, most of this film was shot using the RE Alexa Mini, which is a really good camera, but it was not possible to use it for this shot since it's big and bulky um, and expensive. Not really something you want to put in harm's way. So we mounted the uh, GH5 on a Ronin S and our cinematographer Brian filmed this from a moving vehicle while using the joystick on the Ronin to tilt the camera down from the sky. So it was kind of tricky. Um, what we didn't know at the time was that the GH5 had a dirty sensor. Uh, it's not really noticeable in this first version of the film, since a more thorough color correction happened in the final version of the film. But you can see here there's a large piece of dust, and, uh, and it's actually also there in the final version, uh, since it was really difficult to remo remove, um, since there's kind of like a movement behind it. You can see here there's like a, like a dust blotch or something. Um, which was removed, and there's, you can't really notice it here, but there's a bunch of like little specks um, that were noticeable once it was darkened. So here's the final version of that shot. I'm not going to show everything, but I just want to say that this was cleaned up by exporting all the frames from Premiere and fixing each one in Photoshop uh, using the clone tool. It was kind of tricky because each frame had to blend into one another seamlessly. So the next shot involved removing parts of a gate from it. I was told it looked like private property, which is what it is, but the character might not turn there. Originally, the story had the character's car break down on a desolate road, but getting permits turned out to be a huge hassle, so I was lucky enough to find someone to allow us to film on their property. While it's not a road, it still looks like a country lane, and the removal of the gates made it more believable that the character would listen to the GPS to turn there. I removed as much as I could. Since most people will be looking at the car, they won't notice that the, where the objects were, the wind isn't really moving the plant life there. I couldn't remove the most foreground part of the gate since there's too much vegetation moving in front of and around it. So the next shot involved making sure the car looked like it suddenly died. It was difficult for Nicholas, the actor playing the main character, to actually turn off the car and have it drift to where it was supposed to end up. So he ended up deciding to just brake. Um, and you can see like the car lights, the brake lights are still on and the exhaust is coming out of the car. Um, so the character doesn't know it yet, but he drives through the work area of the poorly trained afterlife f transition facilitator who has long since, since left, but has left their extra dimensional displacer there. Um, and basically it's the equivalent of like an EMP. So it kills all electronics and cars and anything that I guess goes into that bubble. So the other thing uh, I did as well was I added like headlights because um, Nicholas had this idea of like flicking the headlights on and off to show that the car was dying. Um, but in the previous shot, uh, the headlights were off. So I added them and hopefully it looks realistic. Um, and I did that using a, like a lens flare. And all this was a relatively simple to do in After Effects using track motion and masking. In this shot, the main character doesn't realize it, but he's trapped in a sort of bubble uh, created by the extra-dimensional displacer, which is used to set up the work area of the transition facilitator. So when he starts to walk away from his car, he's brought back to the other side, kind of like being teleported. So this could have been filmed in any number of ways, such as using cool teleportation effects, but considering the time constraints we had, we wanted to keep it simple. So we had him walking out of one side of the frame and then repairing back onto the other side. How we shot this was we had Nicholas get to a certain point, run towards the camera, and then under it, and then to the other side and start walking into the frame. 
All this ended up taking about 14 seconds, which I thought was far too long for the audience to just wait for him to reappear on screen. So I felt it was necessary to shorten it. Uh, I tried splicing it, but it was too obvious with the leaves blowing the wind that it was spliced. We could have done it other ways, like maybe using different cuts, different angles, different shots, but having it as a one continuous shot really sells it better. So what I ended up doing was taking a shot of Nicholas reappearing on screen and then masking him out over an empty shot of just the car in the field. It was time consuming and not 100% perfect, but it moves fast enough that I don't think anyone will notice. This next shot was taken a week after all our filming was done. After a quick rough edit by our, our editor Jamal, I felt there were missing elements that needed to make the film flow better. So I ended up going back to the location with just Nicholas and the owner of the car, Darko. In the shot, I noticed Darko was in the reflection of the car and I failed to notice it while filming. The boom pole might really stand out, so I ended up using Photoshop and After Effects to remove it. Because he walks into that area, it made it more challenging and it had to be masked frame by frame. This was the first shot I started on, so I probably would do it differently now, probably more efficiently and it would probably look better. The final version is not 100% perfect, but I think most of the audience's attention will be on the character and they won't notice any weirdness in that area. You can still see Darko's body and head, but it's not as noticeable as the audio equipment, and it could really be anything. Here we have another case of a shot with a dirty sensor. It's really noticeable as the camera tilts up and over the blue of the car. And here is the final version. This was done using Photoshop and the clone tool, being careful to clone from the same area to avoid pixel weirdness. There were two shots where the dead cat on the mic was reflected in the car. These weren't very difficult to remove. Out of all the visual effect shots, these were the easiest and the least time consuming. This next one was the most frustrating to work on since it was hours of work that could have easily been avoided. It was cold when we were shooting out and as a result, the actress's eyes started tearing up. I was the boom person in this shot and I noticed a tear, but I didn't want to cut. The actress was doing an amazing job of saying her lines and I didn't want to interrupt her and I thought, Eh, I can fix it in post. It literally would have taken about a minute to just stop, have her wipe her eyes, and start again. Instead, I spent hours working on the 600 exported frames, editing each one in Photoshop using the clone tool. Maybe there is a better way to do this, but it's the only way I knew. What made it worse is that I had to do it twice because my first attempt wasn't that good. I had a skin blotch running down her face instead of a tear. What I learned was when cloning, you need to clone from the same source and keep checking previous frame, frames so that they blend well together. So lesson learned, uh, when working on set, it's always best to get the most perfect shot you can and avoid as much post-production work as possible. This was the most challenging of the effect shots. As you can see, there's this like structure behind the character in the background, and I didn't really like it there for two reasons. One, I thought when the character had his car die and he started walking, people might question why he went straight when he could have went towards the structure as maybe there were people there who could have helped him. And two, it might be a little distracting to the audience to see this thing in the background. Why this was difficult was that the arm goes right through it fairly quickly, and there is quite a bit of motion blur. So how I did it was by grabbing a frame from a shot that wasn't used, and luckily I had something that blended well with this shot, and worked on it in Photoshop to blend it in with an existing frame. Then I used several instances of masking to blend the new frame with the existing footage. It took a bit of Googling and many hours of frame by frame masking and tweaking, but overall I think it turned out well and I'm pretty happy with the final result. For the final shot, um, there were soccer posts in the background and I figured I might as well remove them. They could have stayed in, but I just decided why not. I took one frame from this footage and cloned out the posts and that became the new background that I masked the foreground elements on top of. It took a bit of time because his face and hand move around a little bit, but Overall, not as challenging, just time consuming. So that pretty much covers it for the visual effects of Afterlife. I will be creating another video about the audio post-production in the near future. In the meantime, thanks for watching.